pleasure to be with all of you guys this morning. I pray that today, um, I pray that today as much as, I promised myself I wasn't gonna cry, and I cried the first time, but I have to let it out, so it's a good thing. Um, but I pray that just as this has helped me, I pray that it will help you guys as well. So let's read in 2 Corinthians 12, 7 and 10. It says, Or because of these surprisingly great revelations, therefore in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Can you say that with me? For when I am weak, then I am strong. Okay, don't cry, guys. <laughs> it doesn't help me. It doesn't help me. Okay, so let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the opportunity to share your word, Lord. I pray that today that you may speak to us, Lord, and that um, your word will land on good soil, Lord. And help us to not cry. Help me not. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> so as I said, in this past, these past couple months, God has really been speaking to me about my own weaknesses. And today I'd like to share a little bit of what God has spoken to me through the thorn in the flesh of the Apostle Paul. As we read scripture, we know that the Apostle Paul was a powerful man of God. He was very passionate for the things of God, and he was and is from God, a role model of what it is to be a missionary and a believer. And in his letter to the Corinthians, Paul talks about the thorn in his flesh. The Bible refers to this thorn as a weakness. We don't specifically know what this weakness was. A lot of people think that it was um, physical, it could have been emotional, or it could have been um, spiritual. We'll never know what this weakness was until we get to heaven, um, but what we do know is that God still used Paul even though he had weaknesses. And friends, we all have weaknesses, right? Amen? <laughs> um, but what is this weakness that Paul refers to? I believe that um, this weakness Paul refers to is not a sin, is not a vice, or a defect of character that we can change, like being impatient. And the weakness that he refers to is whatever limitation that we might have or have inherited from our family, and we don't have the power to change them. These can be physical, like a sickness or some sort of inability. It can be an emotional limitation, like a trauma, an introverted personality, something we might not be good at. It could be intellectual or a spiritual limitation. It could also be uncontrollable circumstances that can weaken us, like financial limitations or relational limitations. In all, we all have different weaknesses. There is not a single person without weakness or um, that is perfect. Perhaps you might be strong in one area, but in another not. For example, one can be strong emotionally and another person can be strong intellectually. Another person can be strong intellectually, but not strong emotionally. Few of us are gifted in the same way. When we think of our weaknesses, we can be tempted to think that God can never use us. Many times I have thought this. How can you use me, Ryan? But I love this. It says, well, I wrote it, I guess. <laughs> and wants to use us. God has a different perspective of our weaknesses. In Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and your thoughts than my thoughts. Many times we don't understand how God sees things. God doesn't see things in the same way that we see them. Um, we see things in the superficial, but God sees in a deeper level even more than we can. 
but God works in completely opposite. God works in completely opposite to what we expect. Amen. Amen. Many times we think that that God only wants to use our strength, but in reality, this is good news. Okay, control myself. <laughs> um, God is delighted in using our weaknesses for His glory. In 1 Corinthians 1, 26-27 says, Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many of you were influential. Not many uh, of you were a noble birth. I can't even read. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. And whenever I read this, I'm always reminded of this example. If you would be a coach of a soccer team and you would be picking your players, you probably necessarily wouldn't pick players that you probably would pick players that are the talented, the, mo the fastest, and with the most experience, right? You wouldn't pick players that have never played. But God, when God chooses his team, he chooses the weak to demonstrate that, we did not, that he does not depend on experiences or talents. If a coach wins with the best team ever, it's not really impressive, right? But when a coach wins with the worst players in the league, that's a miracle, that's miraculous. And that is why God has chosen to use us. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> your weaknesses are not an accident. God has allowed them in your life with the purpose of demonstrating his power through you. Many times, we only see the finished product of a person. And we don't see the beginning or the process that God has taken them on. These people were weak at first, but God has transformed them. For example, Moses, we all know him. He had a stuttering weakness, but even then, God still used him. God, God has never been impressed by our strength or our self-sufficiency. God is drawn, drawn to those that are weak and that admit their weaknesses. Jesus considered the recognition of our shortcomings as an attribute of the poor in spirit. This attitude is what he blesses. God is delighted in using the weak if we remain humble and draw close to him. That is why God delights in using the weak. That's why God delights in using us. 2 Corinthians 8, 12, 8 and 9. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. Whenever I read this, it's a conversation between God and Paul. And to really understand this passage, we need to understand the friendship between God and Paul. When God chose and found Paul, he was weak. Paul was not the ideal choice. If you had an option, I'm sure you wouldn't pick the persecutor of Christians. It's very important to understand that God chose Paul and not that Paul chose God. God purposefully chose the man that went from house to house dragging off both men and women and putting them in prison. The Spirit of God transformed Paul. God took the worst persecutor of the church and made him in one of the most important apostles. It was through the Holy Spirit that Paul was transformed, and through the Holy Spirit, he was made strong. The Apostle Paul accomplished many things for the kingdom of God. Even though God had done an incredible transformation in his life, Paul still recognized his weaknesses. It was Paul that pleaded with the Lord to take away the storm in his flesh. This tells us that Paul recognized that he had weaknesses. Just as Paul recognized he had weaknesses, we too should recognize that even though we've been transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit, we will always, 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 always have weaknesses. And the reason why God allowed him to have weaknesses was simply so that he could depend on him, so he could depend on God. It says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. Our weaknesses create a dependency on God. 
He is omniscient and He is an omnipotent God that can do above and beyond anything we can ask or imagine. When we depend on God, we allow His supernatural strength to work and we give Him all the glory. If we work through our own strength, His grace is not made perfect because as scripture says, His, His power is made perfect in weakness. When we surrender our weaknesses and let God use them, we receive power from God and we become strong in Him and only in Him can we be strong. Friends, we need to rejoice in our weaknesses. This is probably one of the hardest things for me to do is to rejoice in my weaknesses. And I battle with God every single day. Mike is telling us today, and he told me countless times to rejoice in your weaknesses. I don't know what your weakness is, but I sure know what mine are. And he tells me to rejoice in them. And he's telling us today, rejoice in your weaknesses. Second Corinthians 12.10, this is why. For Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in hardships, in insults, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. At first, this doesn't make sense, right? We aspire to be free from our weaknesses. We aspire to be free from our weaknesses, but it doesn't work that way. <laughs> um, Paul recognizes weaknesses, and we too should delight and rejoice in them. Contentment is an expression of faith in the goodness of God. God. Paul gives us many reasons to rejoice in our weaknesses. As I mentioned before, it, help us, it helps us to be more reliant on God. The Apostle Paul referring to his own weaknesses that God did not take away. He said, I am delighted with my thorn in my flesh because when I am weak, then I am strong. What we can learn today is that Paul did not get angry or that he or deny that he even had any. He accepted, he recognized, and he demonstrated a character of joy towards them. Friends, when Satan wants to come and point to your weaknesses, remember that God allowed them in your life for a reason. Fix your eyes on God and fill your heart with praise towards him. He understands every, every, every weakness we have. And the Holy Spirit is willing to help us, and the Holy Spirit is willing to work through our weaknesses. Let's, re let's remain dependent on God each and every day. Because the weaker we are, can you say that with me? Because the weaker we are, the, weaker we are, the stronger we are. The stronger we are. And the more weaker we are, the more, weaker we are. The more God manifests himself, the more God manifests himself in our lives and in our ministries. In our lives and in our ministries. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so, so much for this opportunity, Lord God, to share your word. I pray, Lord God, that just as you chose the Apostle Paul, Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for our weaknesses that teach us to depend on you. Help us to see the things how you see them. Give us your eyes, your mind, and your heart to keep moving forward. Lord, keep on using us greatly and use our weaknesses for your glory. We know that without you, we are nothing, and we need you each and every day of our lives. We declare that our weaknesses do not define us, but help us to be more dependent and more reliant on you. Thank you for our weaknesses. In the name of Jesus, and everybody says, Amen. Amen.